Hey everyone, good morning. How are you all? It's uh, Wednesday morning, uh, August 12th. This is our 20th day gathered together in Exodus. It's unbelievable. So we started the last week of July. <laughs> And here we are on the 20th day. Hi, Gail. So today we're in um, uh, Exodus 18, and we're going to learn something called the Jethro Principle and uh, talk a little bit about organization and the gift of governments. Good morning, Christine. And um, just Really, there's so much wisdom in this chapter 18. You have not heard the previous chapters, especially the last two or three. You need to catch up because they're wonderful. And it will really put you into complete understanding of where we are now. Um, yesterday, we were talking about the Amalekites. Amalek, who came up against the Israelites. Um, it was the first time in their journey through the wilderness that they would be opposed, harassed, and actually um, a fight or a war would start against them. And um, we learned that it's better to have your arms held up by others if you're too tired to oversee the, the assignment that God's given you. Moses um, had the privilege of having Aaron and her um, hold his arms up so that they would have victory. Um, so I praise the Lord for those who hold my arms up, and I praise the Lord that I can hold the arms up of other people. All right, so <clears throat> chapter 18, um, we're going to get started here. It says, now Jethro, he also is called Reuel, R-E-U-E-L, um, who is the priest of Midian. The Midianites were nomads. They lived or settled or came from the northwestern part by the Arabian Desert. Um, he was the father-in-law of Moses, and he had a daughter named Zipporah, which is the person that Moses married, took as his wife. And... Um, Moses' relationship with Jethro included um, being, um, he needed, he was seeking refuge or, you know, he was fleeing from Egypt and Jethro gave him refuge, took him in as a stranger. And um, also he ended up working for him, for, for Jethro for 40 years. So um, he was um, not only Moses' father-in-law, he was his employer, and um, he learned to trust and uh, live with and understand and know and have relationship with Jethro. It's really important that we understand, understand that before we see how he was able to take Jethro's counsel later on in this chapter, and I think it was all out of relationship. So um, Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. So um, Jethro wasn't with Moses. He was still um, living where he lived with his people, and he was not worshiping Yahweh. He was a priest, but he was worshiping other gods. So that's important to know, too, that the Lord used him to give instruction and wisdom to Moses, and he was not a follower, follower of Yahweh, and so God can use anybody. 
uh, verse 2, then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after Moses had sent her back to her father. So he had sent Zipporah back uh, when he was leading the people through the Red Sea and getting them out. So, and her two sons, of whom the name of one was Gershom, they had two sons. Gershom is the first, and that means expulsion or a stranger there. For Moses said, I've been an alien in a strange land. Maybe this man, young man or son was, you know, 40 years old by this time. And the name of the other was Eliezer. And that means God is help. For the God of my father, said Moses, was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. So um, one meaning alien and one meaning God is my help. <laughs> and Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with Moses' son, sons and his wife to the wilderness where he was encamped at the Mount of God, which is um, Sinai. Yes, that's true, Gail. He's the father Moses did not have. That's so good. Wow, great insight. Love that. Um, boy, we need fathers. What an awesome thing to also receive. Hi, Barbara, from this teaching. These fathers or, or fathers-in-law stepping in. Um, he, he, Jethro, Moses, let's see, sorry. Verse 5, and Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with Moses' sons and his wife to the wilderness where he was encamped at the Mount of God, which is Sinai. And he said in a message to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am come to you and your wife and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed in homage and kissed him. And each asked the other of his welfare. And they came into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law all the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake and all the hardships they'd come up, that had come upon them by the way and how the Lord delivered them. Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness of the Lord for all the goodness the Lord had done to Israel in that he had delivered them out of the land, hand of the Egyptians. He was rejoicing to see that the Lord had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. He was so for his son-in-law and for these people and for them to be free. And Jethro said, blessed be the Lord who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who has delivered the people Israel from under the hand of the Egyptians. <clears throat> now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. Yes, in the very thing in which they dealt proudly, he showed himself infinitely superior to your gods. So even Jethro received revelation about God through these demonstrations and these acts. So his heart was not hardened towards the Lord like Pharaoh's. And he, even though he was, um, you know, a priest for other gods, God um, was, was showing himself to him as well. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices to offer to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. And I don't know if this means that he was getting converted over or if or what this means. I wish we had more details to say. And Jethro's heart was turned towards God Most High and worshipped him forever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but he offered him sacrifices. I think this is a really good thing. Um, and Aaron came in with all the elders of Israel. They ate bread together before the Lord. Um, they broke bread together. And I think... Um, if nothing else, because it says here at the end of the chapter that he went back to his people, but if nothing else, he was sent as a messenger from the Lord to Moses. He'd already been so kind to Moses, and he'd already given Moses, you know, a wife 
and um, a place of, I just love this man. <laughs> I love this guy, Jethro. He's awesome. Um, <clears throat> so um, ne the next day in verse 13, Moses sat to judge the people. <clears throat> and the people stood around Moses from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you do for the people? Why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. The people are coming to me all day long, hours and hours. When they have a dispute, they come to me, and I judge between a man and his neighbor, and I make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And then verse 17, Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing you are doing is not good. Have you ever had anybody tell you this? This is your friend. <laughs> this is such love here to say to someone, the thing you're doing is not good. Now, you will surely wear out both yourself and this people with you, for the thing is too heavy for you, and you're not able to perform it all by yourself. So he's giving Moses this beautiful counsel, telling him that his days being filled with this much is too much for one person. Isn't that good that he could recognize this? Listen to me now, I will counsel you, and God will be with you. You shall represent the people before God, bringing their cases and causes to him. So you're still going to be the, the representative towards God, but here's, here's what you need to do, the changes that you need to implement. Teaching them the decrees and the laws, showing them the way they must walk and the work they must do. Moreover, you shall choose able men from all the people. These are the kinds of men that he told him to choose. These are the kinds of elected officials, appointed officials that we need to be praying for. This is the character we need to see. These people need to be God-fearing men of truth, God-fearing and men of truth, that hate unjust gain, and then you can place them over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens to be their rulers. This is the general principle. Um, I was thinking about how he split up the peoples in these numbers and groups, and I thought, what if he meant something like with the tens, that might be your neighborhood, the block that you live in. Maybe there was an overseer, like a neighborhood watch person that helped out just in those 10 families. And then maybe um, 50 houses, maybe a development of 50 houses or 50 families was overseen by another person. And then all of their needs would be met. All of their um, children would be um, fathered and mothered and seen at, you know, seen to. And it's so wise. There's so much wisdom in this. And um, then, you know, hundreds of uh, families, maybe in a whole um, part of the town, if we, you know, would call it like a, a whole um, a quadrant of our town would be overseen by someone and then thousands, then you would have like, you know, if he had um, someone that would see over a thousand, it would just be a region. So it's just so beautiful to see what kind of character these people would carry and how they would be chosen for that. People were chosen for their character. People were chosen uh, for their humility and their God because they were God-fearing. That's what makes a good leader, a sound leader, someone that's not going to give 
an ear to unjust gain or to take um, monies from special groups, you know, be because they want their way. So they advance them personally. The leader, they're listening to, I don't know, some in our day, big pharma or something like that. So I just love all this. And I, I was reading um, a little bit about Jethro um, and about the Midianites. <clears throat> and um, yeah, anyway, he's a good man. And the Jethro principle um, what we're seeing here is um, a gift of governance that he had. And um, that's what we have available to us through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that um, there are people who are um, very gifted organizationally and can handle groups of people. And then just the way that he was able to execute judgment in a in a God-fearing, God-inclusive way, in the sight of the Lord, knowing that he sees everything. Um, and then verse 22 says, And let them judge the people at all times. Every great matter they shall bring to you, and every small matter they shall judge. So it will be easier for you. And they'll bear the burden with you. Well, the, Moses could be like the Supreme Court judge and decide the really, really big things. And then he wouldn't have to be deciding the small things between families. If you'll do this and God so command you, you'll be able to endure the strain and all this people also will go to their tents in peace. They'll get the attention that they need individually because they'll have it overseers that can actually touch their lives. It's really frustrating to be in a situation where you don't feel like the leadership can see you. And I think Jethro was trying to alleviate that. So Moses listened to and heeded the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he said. And again, I believe that after all these years of relationship and worth equity, work ethic and uh, employer-employee relationship, father-son relationship, um, just meals together and welcoming him into his home. This was the way that he built up the trust that Moses needed at this point in history. And he needed good counsel. And God was so gracious to send a man like Jethro that he could really hear from. And so he did everything his father-in-law su suggested, and he chose able men out of all of Israel and made them heads over the people. They ruled over thousands, over hundreds, over fifties, and over tens. And they judged the people at all times, the hard cases they brought to Moses, but every small matter they decided for themselves. And then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. So he's such a gracious and, and uh, what a wonderful man that he, you know, accompanied his daughter to be back to join her husband with their two sons. And then he gave him this great instruction, and the people so benefited, and you know, uh, so did Moses. Heaven's sakes, he got um, he got so much help from him. Let me see if there's something else that you guys are saying. We're here. He's a good guy. Yes. That's the end of chapter 18. And tomorrow we'll be in chapter 19. I probably will um, be on earlier than 8. Mm -hmm tomorrow um but i can all let you guys know um and yeah is there any other
comments that you guys have this morning. We need Jethro's. Uh, we have an election coming up. We need Jethro's. In our Senate, in our House of Representatives, we need Jethro's. Lord, we pray for us, actually the spirit of Jethro to come over our land and over our election of coming. Pray for God-fearing men and women who consider you in all of their dealings and judgments. We pray that for our Supreme Court. We pray that for our lower courts, our judicial system. Lord, we ask that you would take out and clean out the people who are not like Jethro. We thank you for the example that he was. Thank you, Lord, for all the Moses fights in our land and in the world. You are very at very high places in your heart and in your mind. This point in history. And we, we hold up their arms in the spirit right now that your will would be done. Your will, God, on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, it does remind me too, Barbara. It reminds us, some of us were at the coastlands, it reminds us of how we had companies of people directed by the pastors broken up into groups, and then, yes, the leaders underneath that administer to smaller groups of people. It's actually just brilliant. I agree. I've always looked at, back at that and thought it was such an absolutely wonderful model. Well, thank you for coming along with me today. I believe Zipporah stayed, but I um, I would imagine she would be joined with Moses. Doesn't say there in that chapter. Anything else? I'm looking here. Um, let's see. So, um, Yeah, I don't know about that. Okay, blessings. She's praying for that. Bless Laura, yes. Thank you, Gail. All right, love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow early. Bye-bye.